from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Mind. Well, good evening and welcome into Open Line. I'm Chuck Long, glad to be along with you on this cold, very, very cold evening. This is one of my favorite hours on Open Line. This is our Ask an Expert. This is Ask the Attorney and one of our very favorites here at News Channel 5 Plus, Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm. He's going to be taking your questions throughout the hour. You know, anytime, if you've ever seen this show, when Kevin's on, our phones light up like crazy for the hour. So when you do have that question or comment, make sure you get on the line with us just as quickly as possible so that we can get to those questions, those comments. and. You know, there's something, this obviously has been a, a really crazy year, and, and I think a lot of you, you have some questions in, in, in the legal area, and you want the expert to be able to answer those questions and to do it with the, uh, the grace and the wisdom that someone like Kevin Kennedy has. So, when you have those questions, like I said, just give us a call right there at 615-737-7587. That's the number to call. So, hope you uh, are going to have a happy holiday uh, this year. This is going to be our um, last Ask an Expert uh, with Kevin for the year, so we're really looking forward to this. So, let's welcome Kevin Kennedy. Kevin, it's great to see you as always. How are you, sir? Good to see you, Chuck, and God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. I love the Christmas look. <laughs> you know, it lifts me up. You're always a, a fun person to do this show with. You know, this puts this show about nine years that we've been on the air, so we're going to wrap up another year with this, and it's been a delight to work with you. We've had a number of hosts, so to the viewing audience that continues to watch, uh, thank you for watching, and I like to always think that we're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Even when we talk here, Chuck, the truth is you can give a little advice, and boy, it can go on for generations. You learn something, and we're going into the holidays, and you're teaching your children. So to the parents, uh, get out a little pad. Take some notes because it will jog your memory, and we might be able to share something that would ease your mind. One of the things about legal problems, when they get on you, they will ride you. And during this pandemic, you can make yourself full of worry, anxiety, depression. And you say, well, I am so glad I heard him say that because now I feel so much better. I can't wait to pick up the phone and call my friend and say, hey, this is what's going on. I want you to think about that. So with those words, we are delighted to be with you, love to share, and I always love working with you, Chuck. Well, right back at you, Kevin. And, and you know, Kevin, of course, the Kennedy Law Firm, I know a lot of people throughout Tennessee are familiar with it. You guys have been in business over 35 years. You have the experts there. And one of the things that, that we mention quite often is when someone has that legal question or that legal problem, they're not sure what to do, where to turn, or if they're turning to the right place. One of the yes. things when they come to the Kennedy Law Firm, you guys have such a broad, broad range and knowledge to begin with. So when they come there, they're able to get the answers that they need. You know, one of the things that the pandemic has really made very aware here at the Kennedy Law Firm, uh, there's quite a few lawyers that uh, are, are not available. So it has caused more and more people to come because they can't get to others. So I really feel the responsibility of trying to share because so many things, and it's changing every day. They say, well, Kevin, are the courts open? When do they change? They change all the time. We get a, a little note from the Supreme Court and we'll get a note that changes all the dockets. So what would work a month ago will not necessarily work today. So new updated information. One thing you can always say, you know the law, you know there's exceptions to the law and there's exceptions to the exceptions. So we're in a groundbreaking era in the legal profession right now. And I really do love to share. You know, I just wish that there had been a television show like this when I was young and I could have turned in and watched some. I wish when I was a law student, I would have loved to have watched it because it would have been so much benefit to me. So uh, that, I really love to share this. Absolutely. And you know, Kevin, one of the things too, and, and you were you alluding to it when uh, we were starting the show, as far as the, the time we're in right now, a lot of anxiety out there. And I know a lot of people kind of toss and turn at night. They're worrying about, you know, a number of things. And, you know, a lot of those things end up being just, just things that still happen in our lives, whether it's a, a legal issue with a family matter or, or yes. you're, you know, you're not sure if you can invite the insurance companies or what it is, but you toss, you turn, you lose sleep and you don't yeah. have 
have to. I mean, this yes. is a way, and again, that we uh -huh. basically you're providing them that service by answering the questions throughout this hour. So I tell you what, Kevin, let's go right to the phones. And if you're just tuning in, make sure when you have that question or comment, numbers on your screen, give us a call 737-7587. Our first caller of the evening, Catherine, you are on open line with us with Kevin Kennedy. Welcome to the show. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Are you with us? Catherine? Did you say Cat yes? Yes. You were on. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Yes, I have a question. Hello. Hi. Um, my question Hello. is for a family member who is paying child support in the arrears. And um, the uh, they're paying monthly. The children are now in their 30s or close to their 30s. And we're wondering if there's any type of forgiveness uh, programs or anything in Tennessee where, um, like, some of those payments can be waived, or because there's you know ongoing uh, interest that's involved. Yes. Well, here, thank you for the question because if you go to child support court it is always completely full. That's a kind of a shock. Some people may hear that and they say, uh, wow, I didn't know that many people had those kinds of issues. So one of the things that you can always consider, you have a right to file a petition. If the mother of the children, uh, if you could make a deal with her, you could go and say, hey, she says, the debt is satisfied. If it were payments back to the state of Tennessee, well, then they've spent taxpayer dollars to take care of the children during that time. And so the state of Tennessee can do just about anything they want to with the district attorney. Uh, also, remember this, a judge has wide discretion when it comes to family matters and financial matters. And again, one of their, they can always say, the children have aged out. We hear that phrase quite often in Charleston. The children are aged, what does that mean? that we're dealing with an arrearage problem and we don't have to feed the children, clothe the children. So they can make those payments so minute that you can operate and go. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Absolutely. So thank you so much for that call, Catherine. Uh, line's getting really busy. We're gonna go right back to the lines right now. Donald is on the line with us. Donald, good evening. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Can you hear us, Donald? Donald, can you hear us? Hello? Yes, Donald, you are on open line. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Uh, yes, I have a question about uh, me and my wife are both getting up to be elderly now. We're in our 60s, upper 60s, and we've only got one child. We have our home plus an additional property. And we we're wondering what would be the best way for us to fix our property that we could still have access if we needed to sell it, or would it be better to just will it to our child, or how would be the best way to fix that where that he wouldn't lose out on it or something? That's what okay. our concern is right now. Thank you, Donald, and it's a great question. Thousands and tens of thousands find themselves in the same situation. So my first advice is to have a private conversation with a, a lawyer that does estate work and does wills and things of that nature. Everybody has different circumstances. The people that are involved, some are living in state, some are out of state. So we would make a plan based on your whole family's total circumstances. It's not a bad idea to talk. And first thing, we identify the issues. You know, one of the last things you ever want to happen is say, well, golly, we had to go to the nursing home and they took all of our home that we worked our entire life and we wanted our son to have that. Remember, one lesson you can take away from this, there is a five-year rollback in period that if you were to deed that and then go to the nursing, that could be rolled back and so you never really actually gave it away. Also, remember, it's against public policy to ever do anything that would not be honest and above board. So I always say everyone be honest and above board. Do you have a right to quit claim that property to them? Yes. Uh, there could be a uh, inheritance tax or a gift tax. 
uh, it, depending on the value of that property. Most people will never have to deal with an inheritance because the value of the property doesn't exceed. But all those are private conversations. One other little tool that I'll let you have a little food for thought, there's what's known as a life estate. And you could leave that property uh, to your son for life and then on to their grands, to your grandchildren. Or perhaps you would leave it to your wife for life and then the remainder to your son. There's a host of options and you should just get a private conversation, identify the issues, tell us what are the pros and cons of each one. Thank you, Donald, and good luck to you. Absolutely. We do appreciate that call, Donald. And, you know, Kevin, you, you, another great point that you make, you know, in, in a situation, a lot of times people, they're not sure when they're looking at wills or estates like that, kind of, you know, do I really need, you know, the legal expertise? Can I just make, you know, some, uh, you know, quick handwritten will? But that's part of what it is. The law is very, very complicated. Wills are complicated. Yes. Estate planning is yes. complicated. That's why you need the legal expertise. And remember, they said, well, what about the lawyers? The lawyers can interpret everything on whichever slant they want to take it. So you could interpret it against the estate, for the estate. So again, it's good to understand what are the parameters and where are the pitfalls. You never want anyone to come back and say, well, you used undue influence on your parents to get this done. And then we've got a problem for a potential will contest. You can deed it or you could leave it in the will and some of those could have tax consequences. That's why we say just talk to a lawyer privately, identify those options and discuss them. Great advice. All right, we are going to go back to our lines right now. Vivian is on the line with us. Vivian, good evening on this yes. chilly evening. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my husband and I have always filed our taxes jointly and he passed away in 2019. So I wanna know why am I not entitled to his stimulus payment? Well, that's a good question. And you know, on public policy, when they do all these policies, they'll have rules and regulations on that. What I would recommend is I would talk to a CPA and I would hear what the tax ramifications and what the possibilities, because you may qualify for some other programs since your husband has passed away. So you haven't done, you've done the first step. You've identified the issue. Now, what are the options? I like to teach this lesson. Before I make a lot of statements, I like to identify the issue and hear what this CPA's opinion is, what this government official's opinion, and then we can formulate a strategy and a plan to move forward what, what would be in your best interest. So thank you, and you've identified it. Try to seek that CPA's advice on that, please. All right, good to know. So thank you for that call, Vivian. Right now, we're going right back to the lines. Laura is on the line with us. Laura, good evening. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Can you hear us, Laura? Yes, I have a question. Sure, go okay. ahead. Um, I was put on um, Social Security Disability in June of this year, and since the pandemic, my um, home loan has been on forbearance with my mortgage company, and they have approved my forbearance through March of 2021. And they said, I guess what will happen at the end is I'll have to apply for a loan modification. But since I'm no longer working, my disability is only about $1,250 a month after they take out for my Medicare. And my current house note with the escrow account is $850. Wow. And they said with the loan modification, you actually have to requalify. Um, I guess for the, I guess it's, they do like a debt to income ratio, like they do when you get a first mortgage. Yes. And I had a friend that suggested filing bankruptcy, but I don't know if, if would that benefit me any? Okay, um, Laura. Uh, way as I far can... as getting payments down or, or negotiating with them when this comes up? Yeah, Laura, you're right on it. So your friend was giving you some good legal advice. When we go to the basic arithmetic formulas, well, if I'm making $5,000 a month and I'm paying my mortgage and then my income is cut for whether 
it's through a social security check or whether it's cut because of employment or COVID or whatever, we are confronted, we're gonna to have to make some hard decisions. Now you, you've done really well because you've got the forbearance, but we know we've just bought some time. So the truth is, is the social security disability, is that permanent? Do we have other sources of income? And we're gonna to have to evaluate those options. But yes, a chapter 13 bankruptcy could be the very tool that you need to buy you some time. So much of the time when I look at these problems, uh, we may have to make the decision to sell this because there's no way it'll fit within a plan. But I would immediately go to an expert in the bankruptcy business. Uh, chapter 13 is what you're looking at and say, let's talk about what options. You are right on point. Thank you for that. And I wish you the best, Laura. All right, thank you very much for that, Carl Laura. We've got a lot of you online with us. If you are just tuning in, this is Ask an Expert. We are talking to the expert in the legal field, Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm. The number's there on your screen to call 737-7587. We'll take a short break and more on Open Line right after this.